Hey, welcome to another edition of Peak Life. I'm Jim Hazel. We're going to talk healthcare and we're going to talk the magnet program. And with me now, six feet, safely, socially distant apart from me, is Leslie Griffin, and she's the magnet program director. Hi, thank right? you for having me. Yes, yes. thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, well, it's a magnet journey program and it involves the hospital. Can you kind of get us into that a little bit? Yes, it involves the entire hospital. It is a um, nursing credentialing process, but the beautiful thing about Magnet is it brings everybody together, hence the term Magnet. Okay. So it empowers your staff. It looks at community practices. It looks at um, nurses being on community or on committees. It looks at um, professionally growing, so we look at a lot of ways to enhance and empower our staff, which impacts our patient high quality and re reliability. So as a patient, we kind of want to go to a magnet Absolutely. program kind of uh, hospital, yes. but also as an employee. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, so staff, it is statistically proven that physicians, nurses, um, really anyone uh, any staff member would want to work at a magnet hospital because we've looked at the gaps, we've improved the structure to enhance the process to give empirical outcomes. So anything and everything, it really enhances every process of the hospital. And what, for the in layman's terms, what does that really involve? I mean, I kind of see, I kind of see. <laughs> yes, it's good, but what? Right. How does it? What is it? So it was developed in the the early the the 1980s by nurse researchers during a. Um, there was a nursing shortage. Right. So they were saying, what can we do to attract staff? So hence they started looking at high, um, high initiatives that would bring staff and keep staff because not only did you want to recruit, you wanted to retain. So they put together this process called the magnet, the ANCC mm -hmm. magnet process. And so what that is, is it looks at five components. So you have exemplary professional practice. So that's looking at your quality, your safety, interprofessional uh, relationships. It's looking at new knowledge, so that's getting the evidence-based practice, the process improvement, the research culture ingrained not only in, hey, we want to do research, but hey, we want to provide the latest, greatest care, and everything that we do, we have a why behind it. It has transformational leadership, so that's our leaders taking on being those visionaries, creating the change. They're not asking their staff anything to do. They're not doing themselves. Gotcha. And then we have the structural empowerment. So that's looking at all of the, the practices that we're putting in place for succession planning, mentorships. Um, so it really it hits on any and every moving part of the hospital. So it really is a designation. I mean, yes. there, you know, there's a beacon to that. Yes. And is that across the nation? or? So it's a worldwide credentialing. Currently, yes. I think it's only about 11% of the hospitals that have it. It's a very difficult credentialing to obtain. Right. Um, it takes about two to two and a half years. So we started our journey in August of 2019. Uh, we plan to submit our document in October of 2021. So, and then we are hoping, if no additional information is needed, then we'll have a site visit um, in the spring of 2022. So it's okay. a long process. Now I know you kind of touch base on this, but how does it? What are the benefits of being a magnet designation? Well, it hits on your um, improvement and your quality are improved because you've got your nurses are becoming more certified. They're all going back to school. Your uh -huh. sh shared governance um, is enhanced. So you have your clinicians at the bedside coming up with, hey, I went to this conference, or hey, I read this in this nursing journal. They're bringing ideas and innovation to the bedside, and they're working with members of the team. So it's maybe working with ESD, or working with facilities, or working with dietary. So you're working with all the members of the mm -hmm. team to enhance things that are pretty, pretty simplistic problems. It's just enhancing that communication. So you mentioned it takes about two years mm -hmm. to achieve that designation. Yes. Uh, but what, what, what has to happen, you know, kind of specifically, or yes. what, what are the check marks that make sure that you reach that, that right. back magnet finish line, so to speak? Sure. So the, the check mark was first getting the application approved. So that's making sure all of our leaders were BSN uh, degrees and higher. Uh, we had to have our nursing organizational chart completed, so that's making sure that every nurse in the organization has their um, their communication to the, the CNO, so it's a nursing structure. And um, 
then we have to write a document. So not only do we have to um, you know, have our structures in place, but we have to write stories with evidence. Okay. So it's kind of like a court of law. If you don't have that evidence to prove that story, right. so it's this patient outcome improved from this nurse um, working from your professional practice model. So it's really you have to have evidence to prove that we made patient enhancements right. from our processes. So do we have that designation at Chesapeake Regional now, or are we in the process of We that? are in the process. Okay. Yes. How close are we to the finish line? Um, well, we, <laughs> we're writing our document, so okay, that's good. good. <laughs> so we got through the application process. We are now writing the document. Um, we've had uh, a tremendous increase in our nurse certification rates. Uh, we started a new program there. It's the Peak Pays program. Um, we've got our research up and running, so we've got... Um, one research project that was exempt through, we have our own uh, internal review board for research processes. Right. And then we also have two more research process uh, projects that are being submitted for November. So you have to have two um, IRB approved completed projects for that portion of it. So we're, we're well on our way with weighted, uh, I'm sorry, a ME15 room. So we're doing virtual reality and wellness for our nurses and we're doing virtual reality for our cancer treatment patients. Wow. So we've got those in the works, and that's just to name a few that we're in the process on. Um, and then we just find the stories. So our success stories with our COVID patients, our innovation that we brought about with COVID. I mean, the, this pandemic has actually um, brought about a lot of innovation and just change yeah. that we've had to adapt to very quickly. So um, there are things that we, we will be able to write stories to um, and our new nurse residency program. So we've got a lot of things in place and Chesapeake's already doing great. Now it's just putting it on paper. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. And uh, do you get, I know you get input from staff or the yes. other nurses and things. Mm -hmm. Have you received any kind of uh, you know positive feedback about how it's going? Yeah, sure. Okay. So um, th this is a change, like right. th it's a change model. So um, it, of course, with all change comes acceptance. So we're finally in that acceptance phase where we are go magnet. You can feel it in the air. You have to have a certain level of magnet momentum, I like to call magnet it. Magnet momentum. <laughs> That's Heck, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we did develop Magnet Mondays, and that goes, and it, it just highlights what we're doing, all the great right. things. So when you're getting your certification or you're graduating school or you've got a patient success story, um, or we've had some nursing success, success stories where they start out as care partners or techs and now they're a nurse and they've graduated, you know, so it just shows succession right. um, from within our organization. And so um, when you get that magnet momentum, it, it, I, so I'm disaster certified and I like to say it's an all hands on deck approach. Right. Every person in the hospital has to understand the magnet journey. They have to live the magnet journey. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're in this together. So yeah. it's, it has to be everyone in the hospital. Um, and that's why it, it may be a nursing credentialing, but it's only a nursing credentialing because it's the largest number of bodies you have in the hospital. So once you get the nurses on board, then it's like a magnet. You, you pull everyone else in to enhance those outcomes. Leslie, that sounds wonderful. Yes. I can feel the magnet momentum <laughs> in the room right now, and I wish you guys the best of luck. I'm sure you'll cross that finish line thank you. of magnet journey success, yes. and we thank you for coming by. Do, if someone wants to know more, yes. do they just uh, reach out to the hospital at chesapeakeregional.com, or you know, are they going to call you on vacation, or what do we need to do? <laughs> Well, I do get a lot of messages, but <laughs> um, so actually we can put it on the website under the career section. And you can find all about our magnet journey. Terrific. Thanks again for coming, Leslie. Great. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks for joining us again for another edition of Peak Life and stay tuned for more from Chesapeake Regional on the Magnet Journey program. Be safe and we'll see you next time.